Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Now, effeminate is somebody, as a, like a man walking around acting like he's a woman. When I was growing up, we used to say he's got a lot of sugar in the tank. <laughs> nor abusers of themselves with mankind, and that's what we'd call homosexuality. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Which is a lot of us in here, amen. amen. A lot of us were any of that. You can just pick something out of that list. Verse 11, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord for verse 11, because we are washed, we are sanctified, we are justified. We, most of us in, in here understand what it means to be washed. Praise the Lord for that. We're washed in the precious lamb, the blood of the Lamb. We're washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now the word sanctified means to be set apart for a purpose. You're, you're set apart, you're holy now, and you're set apart for a purpose. But I want to focus this morning on the word, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I want to preach this morning on what does it mean to be justified, and more importantly, how can I get it? Because when you find out what justified means, then you're going to say, okay... If somebody can be justified, I want to be justified. I want to be justified. Justified, it's a legal term. And the definition is, is to pardon and clear from guilt, to absolve or acquit from guilt and merited punishment. Merited punishment, you deserve it. And to accept as righteous on account of the merits of the Savior or by the application of Christ's atonement to the offender. It basically means that you're guilty, then you're made unguilty. Justification is actually the imputation of Christ's righteousness. Of Christ's righteousness. The sinner is charged with Christ's righteousness and we, our sins are put onto Jesus Christ. What God does with justification, I'm going to draw a real crude cross up here. What, what, Christ, what God does with, with justification is, is He takes me and you, He takes me and you, and He takes all our sins and He puts them on Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And when we're justified, He takes all of Jesus Christ's goodness, righteousness, holiness, and He puts it on you. Amen. He flips it up. You ever, when you were a kid, I did this all the time because I was wicked. You ever a kid and uh, you did something really bad and somebody else got blamed for it? You, uh... Did, you got into the cookie jar, you broke something, and then your cousin was over the house, and they come in the house, and they find it, and they're like, oh, you, you, you know, and they start yelling, screaming to him, and you know you're the one that did it, and you just keep your mouth shut, and you, and you watch him as he's screaming, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, they're whack, 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 and they're whacking them and spanking them and everything, and you're giggling, and laughing. Maybe, maybe that's just me. When I was a teenager, uh, we used to go behind Coggin Avenue Baptist Church. See, I was always associated with the church, good or bad. And we'd take rocks and we'd throw rocks at cars as they were driving down Coggin Avenue, just driving by. You say, why were you doing that, Brother Keegan? Because it was fun. And we'd take rocks and we'd try to knock out people's windows. And I was about 11 or 12. Yeah, Sister, Sister Martin's like, I want to I wanna vote him out of the church. She's like, <laughs> but as they were driving down, we'd take rocks and we'd try to, and man, I had a pretty good arm for a, for a young kid. And I took that rock, man, and there was two or three of us there, and I took that rock and I threw it, and man, just perfect. Boom, boom, hit that lady's windshield. Psh, arr, 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 arr. She comes to a stop. So we, of course, are giggling and laughing, and we take off running. And I went to a friend's house who was supposed to be home. His name was Billy Bob Cooley. That's a good Texas name, Billy Bob Cooley. So Billy Bob Cooley, and we went to his house, and Billy Bob wasn't home. So we took off down the, down the alley. We were running down the alley, and we seen the cops, and the cops seen us, and they were down. So we ran down the alley, and I jumped in a dumpster to hide. Yes, I've, oh, my life's always been associated with churches and dumpsters. <laughs> so I'm hiding in a dumpster, and uh, me and my friend are hiding in a dumpster. The cop pulls up there, flips a the lid, and he finds us. He flips a lid on the dumpster. Puts us in the car, takes us back over to the Coggin Avenue Baptist. There's that lady, front windshield busted out. She's out, or no, you know, completely, not completely busted out. But she gets out, it's an older lady. She gets out of the car, and we're back in the back of the car. And my friend was with me who didn't throw the rock. He had long hair, real scraggly hair. 
and I didn't have long hair. You can see I barely have any hair at all. So the, the, the cop comes up there and brings the lady. He, he says, you, I found the two, the two kids that did it. He goes, which one of these two did it? And she looks at me, and she looks at my friend with the scraggly hair. She looks at me, and she looks at him, and she said, he did it. <laughs> the one with the, with the long hair, my friend Archie, blamed it. I didn't say a word. I just, just kept my mouth shut. You know, so from a young age, I understand this word justified. Where you take somebody who's righteous and put it onto somebody who's a sinner, and somebody who's a sinner and put it onto somebody who's righteous. That's what God does for us. He justifies us. He justifies us in Jesus Christ. Turn to Luke chapter 18. <clears throat> Luke chapter 18, please. <coughs> he justifies us. Luke chapter 18. If, uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 9. The Lord God, through the power of Jesus Christ, he justifies us. Now, justified, justified. If I was to go to a jail and I was to go to a jail and talk to a prisoner at jail and say, I know a way I can get you out of here. And get you free of all your sins. I can get you free of all your crimes. And if that person in that jail behind those bars were to say to me, if they were to say to me, well, I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. I would just keep on moving down. Because justification only works for somebody who's condemned. Justification is only for sinners. It's not for the righteous. Justification only applies to those who are condemned, who, are, who are definitely have done something, who definitely are going to be uh, condemned for their crimes. That's only how justification works. Justification doesn't work for somebody who's righteous. There's other, law, there's other legal terms that, that you can do to get them off. But this is justification only works for those that are condemned. Now look at Luke chapter 18, verse 9. Jesus speaks this parable, and he spake the par this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Uh-oh. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Of course, a publican's a tax collector, one of the most hated men in Jerusalem at that time. And a Pharisee was a church leader. Verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. He's praying with himself. In other words, he's not even praying to God. It's not even getting above his head. He prays with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. See, it's all about I, 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 me, me, me. It's not about anybody. You know, he won't, he won't admit that he's done anything wrong. Verse 13. And the publican, standing afar off. See, he wasn't even worthy to come up to the temple. He, was, he didn't think he was worthy enough to even come up to the temple. It says he was standing afar off. Look, would not lift up as so much as his eyes unto heaven. That's why we pray with our head down, guys. But smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He knows he's a sinner. He knows he's condemned. He knows he's not worthy even to stand in God's presence. And he cries out to God. He says, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I've done things that are wrong. Verse 14. Jesus says, not me, Jesus says, I tell you, this man, the one that's crying out, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Amen. Justification only works for those that are willing to admit that they're condemned. I've got some bad news for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're condemned already. Same person, Jesus Christ. He, he says this in Nicodemus. He that believeth on him, on Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. He's condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So you're either walking around in this world, you're either condemned or not condemned. You're either walking around as a sinner or as somebody who's justified in the sight of God's eyes. You're either going to hell or you're going to heaven. It's black and white. There's no gray areas. There's no purgatory. You can't find this stuff in the Bible. It's either black or white. You're either condemned or not condemned. That's what Jesus just, I just read it to you. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you're not condemned. You're justified. But if you do not believe, you're condemned already. You're a walking dead man. So for, for justification to work in your life, you must be a sinner. You must, you must be condemned. And the world, some of the world doesn't understand that they're condemned. They think, well, I'm all right. I'm going to get by. I'm not like he is. 
Just like the publican. I'm not like he is. He's an adulterer and an extortioner. And you know what? That publican probably was all those things. He probably was an adulterer and an extortioner. He probably was a thief. He, he was all those things. But that publican was willing to admit it and get down on his knees and beg the only one who could forgive him, God, and say, forgive me. Be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Amen. And that's how you have to come to Jesus Christ. You must come to Jesus Christ and say, you know, I, I'm no good. And I'm condemned and I deserve to go to hell. Will you forgive me? Will you let me out? And he said he would. He justifies you. There was a governor back in the 20s named, for Texas named Neff. N-E-F-F. -F. And he was preaching in the prisons. I was preaching. He was basically talking in the prisons. And he was talking to the, to the convicts. And he says, we got done. He said, I'll listen to anybody who wants me to listen to them. And we'll go over to a pl private place. And I'll listen to everything you got to say. And I won't hold it against you. If you have anything you want to say, I'm here to listen to you. And a big line of them got in line. Most of them lifetimers they said. And he said one after another these men came in and they were telling him how they were unjustly accused and how they were, they were convicted by, by wrongful doings and that they weren't innocent. And they, he had all these men come by and he said he had one man come by and he comes in there and he says, Governor, I'm guilty. And I did exactly what they said they, I did, but I think I've served my time and I want to come out of here and I want to be a good citizen. I think I could really do something for the state of Texas and for my community. Guess which one he pardoned? That one. <laughs> he pardoned that one. Because he knew there's a guy that admits who he is and who he's not, and he says he thinks he can do something. That's what Jesus wants to hear from us. So justification only works when you're a sinner and you're condemned. And you're a sinner and you're condemned without Jesus Christ. That's the bad news. But the good news is that Jesus Christ can get you justified. And that's what we want is to be justified. So justification is a three-step process. And you, I want to show you this morning. Turn to Romans chapter 3. I'm going to show you this morning. Oh, no, actually, before we do all that, before you do all that, let me show you Galatians chapter 2. Turn to Galatians chapter 2. Pardon me. Turn to Galatians chapter 2. Because I want to show you one more thing about justification before we move on. It's very important. So justification is for condemned sinners that are not, that are not righteous, that are sinners. But the next thing I want to show you is about justification, I want to show you that you cannot work or earn justification. To be justified is something you cannot work or earn it. Turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. To be justified is something you can't earn and you can't work for it. A lot of preach, I've seen preachers do this and it's pretty good. To understand what justification is, is to say like you're ju it's just if I'd never sinned. God looks at you when you're justified just if I'd never sinned. You're just like Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gets to be just like you, a sinner condemned. And all that takes place at the cross of Calvary. And we'll, excuse me, we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. But first, about justification, one last thing you need to know is you can't earn it, you can't work for it. Verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. It's pretty plain. Guys, you can't get around these verses. You can't work your way to be justified. You can't work your way into heaven. We were talking about that this morning in Sunday school. Knowing that a man is not, is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. He that believeth on me is not condemned. You're justified. He that believeth not is condemned already. But it's not a work. You're not going to work, 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 and you're not going to earn this. You're not, it's not something you can work for. You can't earn it. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. If you're going to heaven, you're going to heaven by the faith of Jesus Christ. If you're justified, you're justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. If, you're going to, if it's going to be just if you'd never sinned, it's going to be by Jesus Christ. Man, people, they get me, man. I was talking to a guy yesterday, and this young kid was talking to me. He says, I'm an agnostic, and he was talking about Buddha, and he was talking about Muslim, and uh, Muhammad. And I was trying to tell him, they've done nothing. <laughs> you don't understand. Your, your condition is not like, oh, well, I know there's a God. God says you're a fool if you don't know that. The Bible says you're a fool if you deny that there's a God. Even a, even a kid understands that there's a God. That's not the issue. 
The issue is, do you know you're a sinner? <laughs> the issue is, you need to know you are a sinner and you're condemned already. The issue in every person's life is that they are going to hell without Jesus Christ. They are going to hell. And what Jesus Christ makes them so special is He died on that cross to justify you, to save you, to cleanse you, to wash you, to sanctify you. All these things that Jesus Christ ha did for you at the cross, that's something that Buddha and Muhammad or any kind of religion could do for you. That's what separates Him out. And people don't get that. They think religion is something where, oh, I want to get to talk to God. God don't want to talk to you. You're a sinner. God does not want to talk to you. You're a sinner. Amen. You're rotten and sorry and no good. His love is only found there at the cross of Calvary. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loves you in the cross of Calvary. This is where He loves you at. That's where He's trying to find love. He's trying to show His love to you. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. He says it about three times in that one verse. You can't be justified by the works of the law. Something you can't work for. Something you can't earn. Now let's turn to Romans chapter 3. Now let's turn to Romans chapter 3. So... You're not going to earn this justification, brothers and sisters. You can't earn this justification by doing any kind of works or going to any kind of church or being baptized or doing anything else for God. God, you can't earn this stuff. This justification only comes by faith in Jesus Christ. You've got, you got to put your faith in the right one. So now I'm going to show you, and I'll show you one more verse here just to confirm what we just read there. Look at verse 26, uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 26. I apologize and give you the verse. Verse 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Question mark. It is excluded. But, what, but what, by what law? Question mark. Of works? Question mark. Nay, but by the law of faith. It always goes back into believing in Jesus Christ. Verse 28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Amen. That is a theological doctrine you cannot get around. You cannot get around it. I don't care how you study this Bible and divide it up and dispensational it out and covenant it out and do all these different things. You cannot get around the truth that to be justified, you've got to be justified by faith. It is not of works. You can't be justified by any other means. This is the kind of stuff in Galatians that Martin Luther found that brought him out of the Catholic Church. That said, I need to change how the Catholic Church is doing things because they're not right. You're not justified by going to do the sacrament. You're not justified by doing something for the priest. You're justified by faith only. This reading Galatians is what brought Martin Luther to, to nail those 95 theses on the front of that church. He started seeing the truth that, hey, justification is a beautiful word. And it's an amazing legal term. And God says it over and over again that we're justified. But if I'm going to be justified, it's nothing I'm going to do. It's by the faith in Jesus Christ. It's a three-step process. It's a three-step process, and it's found starting there in verse 21. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. So how can you be justified? Because you've heard enough this morning to know, hey, I need to be justified. Amen. I, I want to be justified. I, I don't deserve this, but I want it. You know, I was reading something about old Jackie Benny, Jack Benny, the comedian. He was getting some kind of award at some ceremony, and he says... He said, I don't deserve this. He said, but I have arthritis and I don't deserve that either. <laughs> a lot of truth in that. A lot of us are going through things in life and really honestly, do we deserve it? Not really. But we don't deserve to be justified either. Amen. Amen. We don't deserve that good stuff either. Verse 21. Verse 21. So how can I be justified? It's a three-step process to be justified. <coughs> Excuse me. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all 
and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. A-L-L, A-L-L, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That righteousness of God, it's by faith of Jesus unto all and upon all them that believe. You put your faith and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe that He can justify you, He can save you. That's what gets you righteousness. Listen, that righteousness of God, that righteousness of Jesus Christ, it comes when you put your faith into Him and then He puts His righteousness on you. That's called being justified, being ju that justification process. V verse 24, here's the first step. Being justified freely. Let's stop there. I like that word free. Don't you? I love the word free. I like to go in and say, we got something over here, and you're always like, well, how much is it? Oh, it's free. Well, give me about five of them then, you know. I like stuff that's free. And the word about justification, it's free. I like it in Revelation where it says, come drink of the waters of life freely. I love that. And it says, the church says, come. It says, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit says, come. Come and drink freely. I, I love that. Because, you know, you, know, you know, we're just all poor folk around here. We don't have no money in our pockets. We need something that's free. We can't earn it. We can't even. If, can you imagine if our Lord God had decided that we were going to have to earn this? How many of us would be just knocked down? How many of us couldn't make it? You can put me on that list. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The first step is it's His grace. It's His grace. The first step is it's God's grace. So first thing going on here is we've got God's grace. And I'm going to put this up here. And I'm going to put God as a sunshine. It's His grace. God's grace. Turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Mm. Look at the second, second step to justification. There's a three-step process to ju being justified. The first step is God's got to give you this grace. You're justified by His grace. It's God's grace. It's not your grace. It's not coming from anybody else, guys. It's coming from the Lord God, Father, Jesus Christ, by the, the, the Bible says in John chapter 1 that the law, that Mo, Moses brought the law and the prophets, but that truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's all the truth and the grace comes by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is grace with a capital G. It says about, it says in uh, Zechariah that Zerubbabel will bring out, he'll be carrying out big stone, and he'll bring it out, and he'll be, they'll be crying, grace, grace. And Jesus Christ said, I am that rock. I am that stone, the cornerstone. Grace, it's his grace. Look at verse 8. Some of y'all say, well, you know, God don't want to listen to me because I'm a sinner. No, he don't. I know some of you don't believe that, but it's, he loves you. I didn't say he didn't love you. Look at verse 8. But God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <laughs> well, yeah, he loves you. He's willing to die for you. He does love you. And he loved you while you were sinners. Jesus didn't come down and die on the cross while, in, while we were getting better or while we had a chance to get better. He died while we had no hope and no chance. Man, he could have, guys, he could have healed. He could have did all he did and he could have turned and t t told the disciples, guys, I've shown you how to live it. Good luck, boys. And he could have ascended up to heaven and he had all right to do that. But he looked at Peter the old fisherman that's cussing like a sailor. He looked at John and James that want to bring down fire out of heaven to destroy people. He looked, at the, he looked at Judas. He looked at all these people and he said, you know what? These guys can't do it. And these are the best I picked out. I better go to the cross and die. He knew we needed salvation through the cross, through his precious blood. But God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 
That's an important verse, guys. The theologically, doctrinally, that's a very, very important verse. Let's break it down. Being now justified. How are we justified? By his blood. So the first step was his grace. The Bible says you're justified by his grace. The Bible says you're justified by his blood. So you see two, two steps of, these th of this three-step process has got God in it, right? We don't have anything to do with this except one thing. It's his blood. We're justified by his blood. Not by our works. Not, it's not us. We're not, justified by, we're not justified by what we're doing down here. We're sinners. We can't clean ourselves up. The very first verse I read to you this morning said, And ye are washed. Jesus Christ made a point to call us little children. And he made a point to say, ye being evil, know how to give good gifts. G G Jesus knows everything about us. And all, the, us have had kids and raised kids know that when you have a kid that gets messed up and clean and dirty and it's mud all over him, you don't go tell him to go clean yourself up in the bathroom when he's about three or four or five years old. Because what happens, he goes to the bathroom, he says he's cleaned himself, he comes out and he looks worse than he was. <laughs> That's what happens with sinners. Sinners in this world, they try to clean themselves up. And they try to clean themselves and it don't work. It don't work without Jesus Christ. Amen. You're never going to be righteous without Jesus Christ. Amen. It's by His blood. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved. Amen. Are you saved this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, do you understand that you're saved? You're saved from something? Amen. You know, we, don't, we say we save somebody from a sinking ship. We save somebody from a house that's on fire. You're saved from the wrath of God. Look, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Through who? Through Jesus Christ. God's wrath is on every sinner that doesn't know Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. They're condemned already. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You believe on Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life. He that believeth not... The Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. That's John chapter 3, verse 36. Same chapter, John chapter 3. Jesus says you're condemned. John says you don't believe on him, the wrath of God abideth on him. See, so many people think, well, I'll just get to heaven and, uh, and God will take my good and he'll take my bad and he'll judge it out. No, no, you're already condemned. Amen. You're, you're already condemned. God's wrath is already abiding on you. Now, He loves you enough to die for you. He's giving you a way out. But don't walk through this world foolishly thinking you're going to die and wake up and say, okay, I'm up here, let's see if I can get through this thing. And if I'm, not, if I'm not good enough, maybe He'll give me a second chance. No second chances. You had your chance down here on earth. This is the day. Today's the day for, for salvation, Peter said. You better get saved today. Don't put it off. God's wrath is on you without Jesus Christ. Am I saying anything that's not out of the Bible? I hope you're reading this with me. I'm going to read it again. Now justified by His blood, we shall be saved, praise the Lord, from wrath through Him. So you're justified by His blood. Now look up at verse 1, chapter 5, verse 1. The third step of this process. Therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it says we have peace with God. So many Christians get saved and they don't realize they have peace with God. Amen. That means God's no longer mad at you. The wrath of God's no longer on you. You're no longer condemned. You're part of the family of God. Now you're his son. You're his daughter. Now you belong to him. Now he's supposed to take care of you. All this stuff takes place when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I was reading about this uh, Japanese soldier back in World War II, and uh, when the war was over, he got scared. He went and he hid in a cave on Guam on this island for 28 years. And they had two hunters come by, and they found him, and they said, don't you know the war's over? And he said, I was afraid I was going to come out and get executed. I thought they were going to execute me. 
So after 28 years, he found out he had peace and he could go home. And they put him on a plane and they flew him back to Japan. 28 years of living without the peace of knowing he could go home. How many Christians are living all their life never realizing, I have peace with God. I have peace with God. He's no longer mad at me. Once you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, he knows you're a sinner. He's cleaning you up. You have peace with him. He loves you. Man, you got somebody on your side now. You were his enemy. Now you're his child. And he does all that through Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith. It's his grace that sends it down. It's his blood we're justified. But it's our faith we put in Jesus Christ that is our justification. You got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You do not want to put your faith. You don't want to put your faith in money or in science. You don't want to put your faith in science. You don't want to put your faith in Mary. You don't want to put your faith in works. You don't want to put your faith anywhere else. So many people in the world that try to put their faith in money and science and, and, and religion and works and all kinds of different things. And all they need to do is put their faith in Jesus Christ. So it's a three-step process. It's His grace coming down from heaven. It's Jesus Christ's blood on the cross of Calvary that justifies us. But the third step, which is the most important step to you, is now you've got to put your faith. Paul said it to us in Galatians. He said it to us in Romans. It's, you're justified by faith in believing in Jesus Christ. He says, is it that simple, Brother Keegan? It's just that simple. You put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And when you're saved, it's not that you're pardoned. It's not that, you, that you're in jail and, and God comes by and God says, okay, you've been in jail, so I'm going to let you go free and you got a pardon and you're on parole. It don't work that way. Justification is a very powerful legal term. Justification is, is if you've never done it. Just if you'd never done it. Done it. You're, it's not that you were ever, it's not that you were a sinner and you were, and you were released from prison and you got some, still got a guilty conscience. Jesus Christ is on you and you've never done it. It's a powerful legal term. It's a lot more powerful than God pardoning you from your sins or paroling you from your sins. He's justifying you. Guys, when God looks down, He's never seen Kigan sin. Kigan's in hell today in God's eyes. I'm in Jesus Christ. And, and God looks down and He sees the blood of Jesus Christ. God doesn't look down and see me anymore. He sees Jesus Christ in me. You know, I preached about five weeks on this stuff. When, God, when, when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came in and I became a new creature in Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. I'm in Jesus Christ. I'm in under the blood of Jesus Christ. It's like in the, the Pharaoh and the, in the story of Pharaoh and, the, and Moses. When they got in the door, the blood was put on. You're in the door, man. The blood's there. They don't know what's behind that door. If you were a, a harlot, if you were a murderer, adulterer, a child molester, you just got in the door and the angel seen the blood and he passed over. If you're any of those things, if you get under the blood of Jesus Christ, it passes over. God says you're justified because you simply put your faith in Jesus Christ. It's a powerful legal term, guys, and if you look at it, therefore being justified by faith, verse 9, justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. It's nothing complicated. God doesn't want it complicated. God doesn't want man putting his two cents into it. God wants us to leave our, keep our dirty fingers off of it. It's all about Him. Amen. Why? Because when we get to heaven, it's going to be all about Him. It's not about you and what you did and how you did it. It's all about, it's because of Him I'm up here. It's because of Jesus Christ. It's because he shed his blood. He's willing to die for me. See, it's all about him. Look at, Matt, look at Romans chapter 10 real quick. We're seeing Romans, Romans, Romans chapter 10. And I'm, I'm getting close to closing. Romans chapter 10. A lot of us don't understand Romans chapter 10 verse 9. A lot of us don't understand verse 9. A lot of us don't understand this because it's like what we see in nature. We see the caterpillar. We don't see the butterfly. We see the caterpillar, but we don't see the butterfly. And God says, you see that caterpillar? 
Yeah, that's not a caterpillar, that's a butterfly. You said, no, that's a caterpillar. No, that's a butterfly. God doesn't see, God, we see what we are today, God sees what we're going to be. See, we, justification is a process of God taking somebody who's ungodly and making us righteous even though we're still ungodly. He takes a caterpillar and says, I'm going to make you a butterfly even though you're still a caterpillar. But he can see the future. He knows what he's going to make of us. He knows we're going to get a new body. He knows we're going to get out of this old sinful body and be put into a new body that can't sin, that's glorious and just like his. God knows all that. Just like a caterpillar changing into a butterfly, God knows all these things. But look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Here's the most important thing about justification. You say you've got to have faith. Yes, you've got to have faith, and you've got to confess it. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead... Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Guys, you've got to believe and you've got, you got to confess it with the mouth. Verse 10, why? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Because simply put, your mouth shows where your heart's at. Amen. Your mouth shows where your heart's at. You've got to ask him. You've got to ask Jesus Christ to save you. You got to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. Will you save me? And He'll save you. You got to ask Him. It's so simple, but you got to ask Him. It's a free gift, but you got to receive it. Amen. It's a free gift. You got to go, can I have it? And He'll give it to you. But you got to confess it. And confessing is, oh, believe, is saying with the mouth what your heart already knows. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. See, look at verse 13, right above my head. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So I'm so thankful to the Lord that it's a simple process of just asking him, and he'll do it. Jesus talked about justification. And I want to give you that, long, that verse in, in closing in, in Matthew chapter 12. I know I'm turning a lot, but I want, I'm showing you this stuff. It's all through the Bible. One last verse, guys. Please, one last verse. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Look at verse 34. We'll, let, we'll just let Jesus Christ really hammer it home today. Boy, I don't like these verses. I've said this a lot. But if I, there's some verses in the Bible I'd love just to cut out. And these, are the, these right here are the ones I want to cut out. Yep. I want to cut them out, man. You know why? Because I got a big old mouth. And I say some stuff I shouldn't say. And I'm going to answer for it. Look at verse 34. Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. You know, the nice, kind, gentle Jesus that never, would never say anything bad about anyone. Oh, generation of vipers. <laughs> well, I love my Jesus. Y'all can have your Jesus that acts like a queer. I'll take my Jesus that acts like a man. Amen. The world can have their Jesus that walks around with a limp wrist. I'll take this Jesus right here. Amen. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh-oh. He says, I'm listening to what's coming out of your mouth, and it's telling me what's in your heart. Now you know why it's so important to confess him. Because the mouth shows where the heart's at. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Whatever's in your heart, that's what your mouth's going to be talking about. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You got a filthy... Nasty mouth that talks about nasty things is because you got a nasty heart. You got a mouth that talks about good things that's full of grace and mercy, that's because you got a good heart. Man, I see this in people's lives all the time, working around men. I know where their heart's at. If they talk about hunting all the time, their, their heart's on hunting. They talk about fishing all the time, their heart's on fishing. They talk about going to church all the time, their heart's on church. It don't take long to be around a man and let him talk to you. You'll find out what's, what he loves. 
This is, look at verse 36, and then we'll mark it. Everybody get a pen, let's mark it out of our Bibles. Everybody get a pen, mark it out of your Bible. But I say unto you that every, this is Jesus saying this, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Ooh, mm, mm, mm. I don't like that one. I don't like that one at all. But we could burn every Bible and it's not going to change. God's word is forever. And Jesus has given you a warning, brothers and sisters, and every man and woman, uh, woman underneath the sound of my voice, that every idle word, not just some of the idle words, not just those words you say when you're, not just those words you say when you're mad, but every idle word. Those are words that you don't think anybody's listening to you. <laughs> Man, I can't, begin, I can't tell you enough how much I do not like that verse. <laughs> that convicts me. We have, a lot, we have a lot of confessing to do, brothers and sisters. I want to get that stuff under the blood before I meet him at the judgment seat of Christ. But here's verse 37. This is why it's so important to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. It's all about your words. In the end, it's all about your words. God's going to bring you up I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You're justified. You're justified. He's going to bring up another person, and he's going to say, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. And God's going to rewind to a day in their life when God's going to say, you know, thou shalt not steal. And he's going to say, I didn't think it was wrong to steal. And God's going to rewind to a day in their life where you were saying, I hate when people steal. They shouldn't steal. They're thieves. <laughs> God's going to use your own words to condemn you. And that should scare you. Because he's recording every one of them. Every idle word. And he's going to play it back. But praise the Lord if, you've took it, if you have enough guts to say, Jesus Christ, will you please save me? I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm wicked. I don't deserve to go. I don't deserve to go to heaven. But Lord, will you save me out of a devil's hell? The Lord said, you'll be justified. You put your faith in me. It's his grace. It's his blood. But it's our faith. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. Confessing with the mouth, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, man, I just give it to you pretty plain, but it's just as simple as it can be. You just need to receive him as your Lord. You need, first, you need to know you're a sinner. You need to know that you're condemned. You can't have a convert without a convict. That means you can't be, you can't be converted unless you know you're a convict, unless you know you're condemned. If you'll, put, if you'll know you're a sinner and put your faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ he shed for you on the cross of Calvary, knowing he died for your sins, if you put your faith in him knowing that, he will save you. If you just put your faith in him, it's just that simple. There's nothing you need to do. You don't need to come down and get baptized. You don't need to join the church. You all you need to do is publicly confess it. I believe in public confession. Jesus Christ says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. You deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. That's why I'm funny about stuff. I don't give an invitation where I have everybody bow their head and lift your hand up and try to sneak in. I don't believe in that. Now, I know we had some preachers come in that, that preach that way, and God bless them. They have, to, they have to answer the Lord the way that I do it. I just don't do it that way. But I want you saved. I'm not trying to get you not saved. You can, you can get saved by catching me outside the church and, and asking me, and I'll show you out of the Bible how you can get saved. But I really believe once you're saved, you need to go and, and tell somebody. You need to call your mom or grandmother or, or whoever it would be, a friend, and say, hey, I want to let you know I, I've received Jesus Christ. I'm a born-again believer. You need to confess him because your mouth is going to show where your heart's at. And that way, when you confess it, Jesus Christ said you'll be justified by your words. And that's what we're talking about this morning. And we're going to give an invitation as we give this invitation. If you don't know Jesus Christ, come on down, down and get saved. What are you waiting on? There ain't nothing to wait on. Don't let God's wrath abide on you until you go to hell. That's the next step. You'll walk through the rest of your life without Jesus Christ. God's wrath will be abiding on you. And then you'll go die and go to the devil's hell. And it was never meant for you. It was a place prepared for the devil and his angels. God never wanted you to go. That's why he went and come down in the form of Jesus Christ and died for you on that cross. Because he's given you his grace. He's given you his blood. He's given you His grace. He's given you His blood. And all you have to do is give your faith. 
Jesus Christ, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And we love you that you were willing to die for us, Father, even while we were sinners and condemned. Father, you still put up with us. And Father, I know as Christians, Lord, we don't do what we should do. Father, we, we embarrass you. We do things that we shouldn't do, Lord. We, talk, we say things we shouldn't say, Lord. We think things we shouldn't think. And Father, I just ask you to forgive us, Father. And know that we're still just caterpillars waiting to be turned into butterflies, Lord. And Father, Lord, but we do thank you, Father, for the word justification. We thank you for the word justified. We thank you that you've took us and put all our sins and put them on Jesus Christ and took Jesus Christ and put all his goodness and holiness and righteousness and put it on us, Lord. We don't know why you would want to do that. We don't know what would bring you to do that, Lord. We can only know, Lord, that it has to be your love and grace that would have you do that for us because we don't deserve it. And Father, we just want to pray, Lord, if there's somebody who needs the sound of my voice that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they don't know if they're going to go to heaven or hell if they were to die tonight, Lord. I just pray as we give this invitation, they'll come on down the aisle and get right with you and get saved. And I'm praying all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello, friends. This is Pastor Keegan Hall of Indian Gap Baptist Church of Indian Gap, Texas. If you'd like to contact us, you can do it at IndianGapBaptist.com. On the internet, it's IndianGapBaptist.com. But I have a question for you. If you died tonight, do you know if you would go to heaven? You know, if you're not sure, let me show you a few verses out of the Bible so you can know if you have eternal life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So that verse tells us there that you can know you have eternal life. And I want to show you how you can know that. Jesus Christ talked in John chapter 3 verse 16. And most people have heard this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that's an amazing verse, of course, talking about how God gave Jesus Christ as a gift to the world. But Verse 17 and 18, he went on to say something interesting. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So the whole reason Jesus Christ came into this world was to save you and to save me and you. But in verse 18, he says something that's amazing. He says that he that believeth on him is not condemned. He's stressing a faith. It's putting your faith into Jesus Christ. But he says there in verse 18, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So he says you're condemned already if you haven't believed in Jesus Christ. It's not like you're going to go to heaven and you're going to stand before God and you're going to have God put your good deeds on the scale and your bad deeds on, on the other side of the scale and he's going to weigh it and if you've been a good enough person down on this earth that he'll let you into heaven. It doesn't work that way. Jesus Christ is real explicit here to say that you're condemned already. You need a Savior right now. The same chapter down in verse 36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. It goes back to a believe, putting your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But the verse continues, And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, it's going on right now. You need a Savior right now. You need to be saved from a devil's hell. Paul sums it up real good here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's putting your faith in Jesus Christ from the heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's very important to confess Jesus Christ because the mouth shows where the heart's at. And in verse 13, he sums it up, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So friends, as simple as just bowing your head and saying a prayer, something like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you can came up from the grave and are alive right now listening to me. I invite you into my heart to save me. Please save me, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you prayed something similar to that, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us at IndianGapBaptist.com. And God bless you, and until next time. Casting all your care upon Him.